Very special. Okay, Is the holiness same as greatness? There is a distinction. So let's talk about greatness first. Okay. Perhaps we can talk about holiness later. What do you understand that there is no one or nothing greater than God? God has all power. He can do all his holy will. So there's no one more powerful than him? That's right. Okay. So what about his other attributes? Give me some other attributes of God. Holiness. Holiness. So there, won't, there can be no one holier than him? That's right. Any other attributes that comes to your he mind? Patient. Hmm? He is patient. Patient. No one can be more patient than him. Okay. More attributes? Uh, he that differentiates between, say, the creation and the creator. Clearly, we must have some attributes that we have and God has. There's a clear distinction and differentiation and grades between our attributes, where God is greater than all of our attributes that what, what we share, right? So, first of all, knowledge of God. Do you think there are someone or there is someone greater than God in knowledge? Or God is the all knowledgeable? Only God knows everything. Okay. What about his um, independence? Do you think God needs to depend on someone no. or something like us he, or his independent? He does not depend upon us. So, is it safe to say God is self sufficient? Absolutely. Okay. And is he. Absolutely perfect in his attributes. Is it safe to say that too? He is perfect, yes. Yeah, so there's no imperfection in God. That's right. There's no deficiency in God. That's right. Fine. So if we share these attributes about God on this understanding, let's talk about the God that you think it's reasonable and coherent. Describe me your concept of God and see whether we can then have some clarity on this issue. So, I cannot fully know no one can, God. It's not about fully knowing God. From what you know, from what you understand and what you believe about Him. What is your concept of God? He is powerful. He knows all. He is kind. He is when you say he, he, is he a male? Is he a man? He describes himself that way. But it doesn't mean he's a male, is it? Because, for example, when you say he, it's referring to one individual or more than one individual? When we say he or a she? I, I believe that God is a trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Explain. Jesus, so, uh, the, the Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, describe in three persons, one God. Persons? Yes. So God is one, but he has three different or three similar personalities. Three, three persons. What is meant by a person within God? They communicate with one another. They have shared fellowship since all eternity. When you say they and there's one, so are you saying God is a composite being consisting of more than one? Saying there is one God, there are three persons in one God. So what's the relationship between a person to this one God? Any one person? What is the relationship between any one of those persons to that one God? Let's take the example of one of the persons. What are those persons within this one God? You said them already. What are they? The Father, Father the Son, Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Let's take the Holy Spirit as a person. Okay. What is the relationship as a person this Holy Spirit has within this one God? They have had That's the Holy perfect Spirit. fellowship from the beginning. Okay, the Bible talks about how the Holy Spirit is sent forth. Okay, and the Holy Spirit, I believe, is the agent of salvation to awaken people who are dead in sin to make them alive. That's the function. So that they can be born again. But that's the function. In terms of what the Holy Spirit is in relation to the God, one God, let's understand a bit more about the person. Is a person within the God, one God, 
a possessor of divine attributes. All three are divine, yes. So the Holy Spirit possesses divine attributes like absolutely perfection. Right. So the Holy Spirit has perfection in knowledge, in power, in patience, and what else did you say? Let's take this. Kindness. Kindness. Um, and, and so does the Father. And so does the Son. And they are individually, as a person, they're self-sufficient, right? Right. So the Holy Spirit is independently self-sufficient. Well, when I said God is self-sufficient... I'm talking about not the person. I'm thinking about God as a whole. Okay, as far as independence... Um, Do you know what I say, my understanding? I'd have to think about that. Let, let's explore a bit more. Let's take the example of the Father as a person. Okay. Is the Father self-sufficient and perfect in his personhood? He is certainly perfect. Okay, is he self-sufficient? In salvation, Not salvation, he cooperated with the Holy Spirit and the Son. That's not what I meant. When I say self-sufficiency is an attribute where you don't need anyone or anything for your being, you are what you are with that inherent attribute of society. It's called society, being a say. So is the father possessor of society, meaning self-sufficiency? Because the answers are two possibilities. Either the father is self-sufficient or he's not. There is no in between. We can explore both the options. Let's take the example of he is not. If he's not self-sufficient, then he cannot be God. Remember what we agreed on? God is a self-sufficient entity. Okay. So that cannot be the case then. So we have to now think about, okay, if that is not the case about the Father, then he must be to be God, self-sufficient. But what that means though, self-sufficiency means he is not in any need for anything else to exist to make him divine or make him God. So he doesn't need the existence of the Son or the Holy Spirit. So he can be God without the other two, without even being be in existence. That's what self sufficiency means. Is this what you believe? That makes sense. I haven't thought about these things. But is this what you believe, though? Because I, in the Christian I, monarchical model, only the Father is a say. If you believe in the monarchical model of Trinitarian creed, for example, oh, sorry, which creed? In the Trini Trinity, there are many models, as you know, as a Christian, you should know. Philosophers and scholars are coming up with a lot of models to explain how they rationally understand the coherency of three gods and still they are one God, right? When you have a father being God and the son being God and the Holy Spirit being God, God the problem arises of tritheism. The Christians are trying to explain how these three gods can be one God according to the Nicene Creed. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with the Nicene Creed where the father is God, the son is God and the Holy Spirit is God, but they're not three gods, they're one God. So to understand how coherent this is, is the son for example is he self-sufficient without the need for any dependency on the father the answer is he has to be self-sufficient if he's going to be God but according to the Christian creed correct me if I'm wrong according to the Christian creed Jesus proceeds of the son the word the second person the second hypostasis proceeds from generates from begets from eternally from the father that means there's only Always an eternal dependency on the Father. The Father does not proceed from anyone. The Holy Spirit either proceeds from the Son and the Father or from the Son alone. Or maybe like that. This is a difference between of the Eastern Church and so on. So may I ask you again, just to clarify, do you believe the Son is self-sufficient? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Have you sinned? Have you broken God's commandments? It's a very good question. Let's park this for a moment. Remind me this question. I actually have, I have, to, I actually have to go. Yeah, we can, to sure, 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 sure. But can you just clarify this one thing for me? You said your belief earlier on is coherent, makes sense. So tell me before you go, is the Son within the Trinity self-sufficient? Because the possibility is either he is self-sufficient or he's not. Which one of them do you take? Uh, maybe, maybe you can jump in and, and share your thoughts. What do you think? 
Well, whether the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit by themselves are self-sufficient or only together, I haven't thought about that. But, 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 but here is another problem, though. If they're together self-sufficient, then individually they're not. Then, then individual members of the Trinity are not any way divine because they are not perfect. They are less than absolute and independent. Nice talking. But do think about it. I'm a Muslim, and I, I wish that you think about Islam because Islam actually addresses the Christians to think about their erroneous belief, the belief that we're discussing now. Islam says this is an erroneous belief which people believed in after Christ. He did not come to tell them about this belief. He came to tell people to worship God, not him. And if anyone ascribes a partner to God, hellfire would be their destination. So please open up the copy of the Quran, read the biography of the Prophet Muhammad who is the last prophet sent by God, the same God Jesus worshipped. Thank you for your yeah. class, Jesus, yeah. but he's the way. Well, let's talk about it, how he's the way. Sorry, we have to go. <laughs> nice talking right. with you. You take care.